January is National Mentoring Month, and yesterday was actually Thank Your Mentor Day. So this is a really good opportunity for us to uh, not only thank our mentors, but to think about becoming better and better in what we're doing every year uh, as we work with young people. Uh, there are many things that, regarding how you recruit mentors, how you end a match relationship. Um, Americans are really great at saying hello and uh, welcoming folks. We don't do such a great job of saying goodbye, and so we need to model that for our young people when they do end a match uh, or when the match is over. Our, our kids in our uh, mentoring program are getting ready to graduate. So while we may continue to have that friendship and relationship, we want to wrap that up so that there is that uh, closure and sense of accomplishment. That's the real connection is? The research tells us that a student that has a mentor is more likely to have better attendance, more likely to avoid negative behaviors, and more likely to think about continuing on in higher education. And so we know that students that are successful in school are the students that are going to graduate from high school. And students that graduate from high school can go on to education beyond high school. And that's why UTSA uh, is so um, committed to working with mentors in our community. We understand the whole circle. And so we want our students uh, to be successful, and not just in San Antonio. San Antonio is very big on collaboration. So when Mentor, the national organization, said, would you consider uh, having a partnership? We wanted it not just for San Antonio, we want it for the state of Texas. <laughs> the awards recognize outstanding uh, mentors, outstanding advocacy in mentoring, and uh, we recognize them across the state of Texas for their work with youth, whether it's youth in K-12 or higher ed. I retired after teaching 38 years and wanted to be out of the classroom, but I do love kids, and so I knew that would be a way that I could still work with children and not be tied down to certain curriculum and such. And so my church had this mentoring program, so I started mentoring as soon as I retired. And what's it like, though? It, it involves, some people might think, oh, it involves too much work. I don't know if I could do that. No, and I tell people that's not what it is. We're not tutoring. We don't have to know curriculum. You are an advocate, in effect, for this child, and you're answering questions because they don't know a lot about the world that we probably live in and they don't have very many experiences and you are sharing your life and your experiences with them, telling them about trips you go on, um, talking about it, looking at a map, pointing to it. Now that I'm coordinator of the program, I fix the mentoring room with lots of books because I think that's important and uh, there's always a map of the world and a map of the United States on the wall so that the mentor can always share where they've been and what is in different places or the place they're talking about in a book. They can show them where it is. What's it like to win this award? It is unbelievable. I was so shocked and I'm so very honored. It, I've just been doing this and it's just sort of second nature to me, but I think everybody should be mentoring. There are so many children who need a significant adult in their life who can broaden their horizons and that's what we're doing. We're broadening their horizons and giving them a chance to do anything they want to do.